In this video, we're going to learn what a platform team is and how it can help to grow and scale your development team from small to large. This is Coding with Adam. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, like, and share. Let's get started by taking a look at what a typical development team looks like. Typically, you have a development manager who is helping to direct resources and make sure that sprints are being completed. Developers are working on code and writing unit tests. QA is writing integration tests to ensure that everything works end to end. And your product owners are ensuring that you're developing the right thing based on research that they're doing to figure out what the customers need. As your team starts to get larger, you may form additional teams called squads, and each team will be made up of the same structure with developers, dev managers, QAs, and product owners. And as you continue to evolve, these teams may even specialize in different areas. For example, we have two web development teams over here who may specialize in different areas of the product. We also have a reporting team and a mobile development team. All of the teams that we talked about over here can be considered build teams. Build teams focus on building features for the customer. The customer that they're interested in is external to the team. They are the users that are going to be using the software. With that being said, who's going to focus on the architecture and developer experience? First, let's understand what architecture and developer experience are. Architecture deals with cross-cutting concerns. These are things that concern all the different teams within your organization, from performance, scalability, security, and logging. You may ask questions about how how is the code structured and whether it's structured correctly. Architecture may also ask questions about whether or not you should be using microservices versus a monolith and also making the decision on which cloud provider you should use if you choose to be in the cloud, such as Azure, AWS, or Google. This isn't by all means a comprehensive list, but gives you a good idea of what architecture should be doing. Dev experience, on the other hand, asks the question, do developers enjoy working on the code? And these questions become really important with retention. For example, are you on the latest and greatest technologies versus using some older technologies. Other things that are related to dev experience are how easy is the development environment to set up? If it's a pain to set up, it may take several days. It may give a bad impression to new developers that join your team. Related to that previous question is how long does it take to onboard new developers? The quicker that you can get developers onboarded onto your system, the quicker that you can start having them contribute to creating new features. To help with architecture and developer experience, you can create a platform platform team. As you can see in this diagram, the build team has a customer and that customer is an external customer, the end user that will be using the software. While the platform team has an internal customer and that's the build teams. Hence, the platform team is going to be treating the platform as an internal product that has an internal customer. The success of the platform team is tied directly to the success of the build teams. The idea is that the platform team is going to help the build teams move faster and make sure that they enjoy working on the product. Now the goal of the platform team is becoming a little bit more clear. The customer is the internal development team. We're also treating the platform as a product. And the platform is everything the development team needs to build and ship a product. And once again, that goal is to help grow and scale the development team. Perhaps one of the greatest benefits of the platform team Team is to decrease the cognitive load on developers so they can focus on building awesome features. By allowing the platform team to focus on architecture and developer experience, it means that your development teams don't need to focus on it as much. However, it's always important that your entire team is thinking about architecture and can contribute towards it. Next, let's go ahead and define what the platform team's output is. So from your platform team, you're going to expect to get technology roadmap, good documentation on the architecture that the build teams can use to understand how the system works. The platform team will also be responsible for establishing patterns and practices. So this could go as far as, oh, the code is structured and how different layers interact with one another or how different services interact with each other if you're doing something like microservices. And lastly, the platform team is also a great place to monitor and track 
tech debt. More often than not, tech debt gets missed and pushed to the side. However, with a platform team, you have a team that's now responsible for making sure that tech debt does get done. Next, we can take a look at how we decide what is platform work. When a request comes in, we need to make a decision. We look at whether or not the request is cross-cutting. Does it affect multiple teams? Is it strategic for our business? Is it frequent? Does it happen very often? Is it something that developers have to constantly do? And can we reduce the time that it takes to do it? And is it something that's related to developer experience and improving the developer experience? If it is, then we put it into the platform backlog. If it isn't, then it may be considered a feature backlog. And deciding who works on this. Now, the platform team doesn't use 100% of their time for platform. However, you may decide that 70% of their time is for platform work, well, 30% is for feature work. And for the build teams, you don't have to allocate 100% to feature work. You could allocate 70% to feature work and then allocate 30% to contributing to the platform work. One of the big questions that you typically get around platform teams is does the platform team focus on architecture while the build team focuses on features? Yes and no. As we saw in this diagram, the build team is contributing to the platform work and the platform team is also contributing to the feature work. The one thing that's important is that the build teams should always be thinking about performance, scalability, security, and logging. The biggest caveat around this is the fact that who's managing this process for the platform. And that's why we institute a platform team so that they have ownership over how the work is going to be done and tracking it. Just like tech debt often gets swept under the rug and we forget about it, well, the platform team would be in charge of that and responsible for making sure that gets done. So therefore, your platform team becomes this governing body that can make sure things are getting done and they're responsible for that. And once again, they're treating the platform like a product and their customer is the internal development team. I hope that you enjoyed learning what a platform team is. And if you did, smash that like button, subscribe and hit that notification bell.